welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be forging a paper towel holder out of some half inch round bar. Got the forge lit up, it's heating up right now, so stick around. We're going to put some scrolling on the end of it and uh, we'll see how we're going to do it. So first thing I'm going to do is start tapering out the section where I want the scroll to start. I'm going to use the uh, round horn part to uh, draw out some material. We'll start it with a square shape first. Clean it up on the flat, on the face. Throw it back in the fire. Okay, working on the face, still tapering with the round side of my hammer. One more heat and we'll start uh, rounding it up. Maybe one more. I want that point here to be a little... Uh, a little more pointed. Switched over to my two pounder just for the finer detail work. Okay, now I'll start octagon. Okay, one more heat after this. I'm gonna go back and use my flatter, flat side of the uh, three and a half pound rounding hammer. It has a cleaner face in this one and uh, be ready to start the scroll. All right, gonna start some clean up here. Get it as round as I can. And even taper. It constantly keeps uh, rotating this piece I don't have any pronounced flat spots. Now be real careful at the end where it's a little bit cooler than the rest because hammering too much will split the end of the material. I'm pretty happy with that. So the next heat, I'll go ahead and uh, do the scroll. Okay, so we want to start the bend about a half inch off of the face, working it over slow. And once you get to about a 90 degree, you can flip it upside down and start the scroll getting it a little bit tighter. I'm going to make it a little bit big just because I want it to lock onto the uh, um, the paper towel roll so it doesn't come off while it's uh, unwinding. So the first heat for that and hopefully with the second one I'll get the whole thing rolled up. Okay so I'm going to be extra careful not to curl that in more than I already have it and I'm just going to hit the face not the areas that I've already curled. I may take a pair of scrolling tongs and just even this out a little bit because there's it's touching right here. Um, yeah. actually not too bad I might have I might have just made what I like to call a happy accident kind of like that give it one more heat and I want to wrap it up about a quarter more inch than I have it here all right it's gonna roll this last section here Now to 
be careful not to make it oblong, which I kind of already did. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I don't do scrolls often. Obviously, I'm a knife maker. Uh, not primarily a blacksmith, but I like dabbling, so at least gets the practice up. All right, so I'm gonna start right about here. This is gonna keep the, I want this one section to stay straight, this last piece to be a straight piece. So I'm gonna start this bend. Should be about a three quarter inch. That might be a little too much, but I can refine it afterwards. And I'm gonna, should be able to see about where I'm going with this now. Get my tape measure. I'm at two inches, so that's way too big. So I can always even uh, lessen this angle here and lessen this angle here. We'll get back to that in a minute though. Just to give me that inch and a half that I'm looking for. say that's pretty close so I'm gonna bend this one back down now this would definitely be uh, better off in the vise I think so I may switch over to that and just bend these that way I think it'll be a lot easier if you have a vise a post vise or anything like that um, this would make it a lot easier these bends a little more accurate so that's what I'm gonna do get this heated back up and I'll take it over to the post vise I already know that's gonna be too tall so I'll fix that in a few minutes going with this I know it's too tall right now but uh I'll make that correction uh, back on the anvil so now I'll get over to the anvil and measure out uh, measure out the uh, one and a half inch height that I need. I had a change of plans and I'm just gonna do the bends that I need now. And uh, I'll, then I'll come back and do the lengthening and, and the, uh, the height correctly. now but I'll be able to fix all of that um, up on the anvil. All right so I'm gonna straighten this out a little. I know all these sections are gonna be way too big so I'm gonna use every part of the anvil to my advantage straightening and refining this
Okay, you see it's curving out a little bit. Um, I think it'll look better once I get this one opened up a little bit more. Trying to crisp up these lines a little. This inside is going to be inside of a paper towel most of the time, so I'm not too concerned about how it looks. I can file anything that's sharp uh, as far as the outside goes, but I do want it to run smooth but still be uh, firm. back in the fire it's gonna take some more refining um, but right now I would say that's that's real close to being perfect I probably don't even need this bend here so I'm gonna I'm gonna wind up taking this out and bending this uh, a little more straight That might be perfect right there. I gotta straighten this part out just a little bit more. So I'll just keep the tip up. So flatten this out a little bit. I think that's the ticket. Grabbing it a little too close, man. Thing's hot. Okay, all contact points are touching mostly. are touching that one's not so this I gotta flatten out now they're all three touching okay just gonna straighten it out it's all a little I'm gonna heat this scroll in back up because it's it's cocked off a little bit. I want to straighten it out. Give it one light hammer tap each, just because right now it's exactly at an inch and a half, and I want it not to be binding up because I know the toilet paper sleeve isn't an exact perfect circle so I think relieving some of that is gonna be the best for it give it a wire brush and I'm gonna let it cool down and I'm gonna test it out before I go any further so the uh, paper towel roll fit fine um, not too tight, not too loose. So now my next uh, process is I'm going to flatten this out just a little bit, almost like an oblong shape. I would call this the maybe the down rod or the down bracket support, something like that. And that's going to extend that uh, this section out so the a full roll of uh, paper towel will fit on there without uh, 
you know, getting stuck on whatever it's mounted to, which in my case would be my toolbox. Round this out, or oblong this out, um, and then I'm gonna make a flat section uh, to drill two holes for it to be mounted. So I'm gonna go ahead and cool this off all the way now. So I'm gonna hot cut this since I have too much material right now. I'm gonna estimate it will be right about here. Once I get toward the end, I'm not gonna hit directly over top. And sorry, move the camera. And it melted my tripod foot. But it's a clean cut. So I'm going to put the rest of this section back in and uh, work it out. So now I'm going to start drawing out the section that I want to use for screw holes mounting. It's going to be a little bit thinner than the rest of it. Got back up some more. Again, this is a very simple design. There are far more complex ones that you can do. With a, you know, a hinge system and, you know, swinging up and down for the uh, roll to go on to. I'm just making this one simple. I have a need. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to clean this up a little more in here. And I should be able to uh, bend everything the way I want it. So the only issue with thin hot steel is it becomes thin cold steel a lot faster than if it was hot thick steel. Thus taking more heats, but it heats up faster. So there's a trade off. happy with that so I'm gonna bend this 90 down this way because this is all gonna face mounted to the right so actually I need to bend it this way which is the opposite of the way I thought I was gonna have to bend it so I'm gonna bend this section first then I'm gonna bend this section and try to form it just so where there's a little bit of a a downward angle so I can be able to drill the holes without it being obstructed by the bar itself. Okay, I think I'm gonna go right about here now. Always best to use the flat side of your hammer when you're doing things like this. That way you don't get too many deep hammer marks. Good 90 there. And I'll file this uh, little piece of flashing off when it's all finished. Okay, so now I'm gonna heat it up to about about here. I'm gonna make my next bend. I'll probably have to go to the uh, purchase side of the anvil because it's a lot thinner. There's nothing that's gonna interfere with, with my mounting part right there. So start the bend on the 
center section of the anvil. And when I get close and I can't go any further, I'm gonna make that 90 right there. Okay, so now here comes the trick, which is funny because I wanted to have that in, put in from the right, but now it's gonna come from the left. <laughs> That's all right. Like I said, I'm very amateur. So when it comes to blacksmithing, it really doesn't matter where, which side it comes from. I just figured it'd be a little more convenient coming from since I'm right-handed, but left-handed's fine too. So now my trick is I need to angle this section up, angle that section back so everything sits flush and this sits down a little bit lower than the than the mounting uh, the mounting part. So uh, I'll figure out how to do that in just a second. I might heat it back up. So, I'm not exactly sure how to achieve this, other than taking it over to the vise again and just manhandling it. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Curve this just a little bit make it not look so plain. Curve that entirely too much, but I'll straighten a little bit back out. Okay, so now I can straighten that out and then I'll get the been going. Not bad. I just got to do that side to get that 90 and then I then I can do the uh, offsets. Okay, now I'm gonna heat this back up and uh, get it over to the vise to make the bending and the offsets that much easier. Okay. Okay, so it's at a good angle now good inch, inch and a half higher than the front bar. So I think what I need to do now is take this back to the anvil and straighten this mounting section out um, without heating the rest of this up or maybe I'll just cool it off in my, in my tank, my water tank. Still need to bend this a little bit more backwards or at the top toward me uh, because right now this front is leaning back so if i bend this top actually i need to bend the top backwards so once this is straight this part here is straight okay dump this down. Just about good right there.
I'm gonna grab a full paper towel roll and make sure half of it is not bigger than from here to here. Um, I don't have a full one with me ex right now, but I'll go in the house and grab one. And if it's not big enough, then I'll just open this up a little more, bend that more 90 and this more 90 and I'll be good to go. Okay, so this is approximately half and I got plenty of room. I got another inch or two, so I'm good to go. So what I'm gonna do next is uh, clean some of these edges up with a file, take off all the sharp edges, clean the, the, uh, the flashing off here, um, maybe do a little bit more refining inside here, make these a little more straight. Some of them are curving a little bit. Um, and then uh, hit some of this stuff with a file just so it looks a little better. Right now I'm gonna put the whole thing back in the fire and get it all one color wire brush it and um, uh, <laughs> paste wax if I can remember that let this cool to a dull uh, dull black still hot enough to smoke um, and then uh, throw some paste wax on there and uh, drill some holes and go ahead and mount it I want to get the flat spots done since they're gonna be the coolest right now And this puts a protective coating on as well as um, darkens the steel more uniformly. Makes it look real nice. Obviously you can't use this if you're making uh, utensils for eating. But you can use it for ornamental things all the time. apply this when it's red hot you don't want to apply it when it's hot super hot brown or black um, but hot enough to make it steam just like it is now excuse the noise people in this state still think those kinds of cars are cool for some
one reason. I think the end is going to be cool enough to handle just with gloves. Somewhat. Really hot still. <laughs> Let me grab a different set of gloves. There's a saying that I've heard for a really long time. That's don't touch any metal in a blacksmith shop. Meaning that just because it looks cool doesn't mean it actually is. And even that was too hot to handle still. Pliers here. Much better. If it's too hot to apply this wax at the time, you can always uh, just keep applying it. You're going to be wasting some of it and get, make, making it somewhat of a mess. But you can uh, continue to apply it until it's somewhat shiny and you'll need to wipe away the excess. In this case, this wax will also help lubricate the steel to make uh, the paper towel roll easier. All right, so that's it. I think it's cool enough. It's gonna retain the wax. Um, I'm going to put it back on the anvil, let it fully cool down, and then I'm going to drill two holes and mount this, and uh, we'll be all done. I'm going to be using a... Uh, flathead screw so I don't need to um, I don't need to taper the screw head side just this side so it doesn't scratch the metal of my toolbox and that's it there concludes today's video I really appreciate you guys following along um, if you liked it if you feel like you got something out of it or even if you found it mildly entertaining I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, click that little thumbs up and uh, leave a comment if you want and also if you want to see what my future projects are um, go ahead and click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell so you'll get a little notification anytime I put out something new so I'll see you on the next project thanks